All right, what is up? Today we're going to be taking a look at how we can transition between tile and drywall. You can see that vertical strip there to the left and also the trim around the shower niche, that stainless steel colored metal trim. This stuff is called Schluter and it looks like this. They sell it in these really long kind of eight foot pieces and it is uh, aluminum. They also make stainless steel. And so in this video, we're going to show you how to install it, give you some installation tips and also how show you how you can cut this stuff because I promise you it is not easy. Uh, so hopefully we can help you out. This is probably the most difficult cut. You got to get that perfect 45 degree if you're looking to put this in as a trim piece around a shower niche or custom shelf. Uh, so I'm going to actually show you how to uh, install this in the niche, the, the shower niche in a separate video because that's a whole nother thing. Um, but we're going to focus primarily on cutting this stuff first, and then I'll give you some tips on how to install it uh, in vertical positions. So uh, first of all, if you have a multi-tool with a diamond blade on it, um, that does not work very well, or a metal cutting blade, it does not work very well. Uh, I did kind of test this, this out, and let's see what happens. It just kind of vibrated and didn't really get the job done. All right, so I was not impressed with this tool as a cutting mechanism, so hopefully that saves you some time. Put away your multi-tool if you have it. Uh, I'm gonna show you a better way. Uh, I also tried this, a, very, a variety of blades on the multi-tool, and you can see the camera there shaking. It is not happy at all. And um, you know maybe there's some special special type of blade out there but uh, I had a lot of problems with the with vibration and I I couldn't get it to be steady and it certainly wasn't cutting in a clean a clean way so away with the multi-tool you can see it kind of beat up the edges here so the next thing that we're going to try out is a good old-fashioned hacksaw now yes if you have a miter uh, a miter saw with a great blade on it that's that's good good for you you can you you can you know YouTube search how to do that. Um, that is probably the best way, but I didn't, I do have a miter saw, but not, I wasn't really willing to spend like 60 or plus dollars on a, on a new blade that would cut this kind of metal. Um, plus the idea of spitting up jagged metal edges on a, on a miter saw, it's just something I wasn't interested in. So, uh, the old hacksaw here, um, obviously you want to get a nice 45 degree. So use your, your, your T square there. And the hacksaw actually works surprisingly well. The most difficult part is getting it started because it's going to want to slide a little bit. But if you can put some tape on there and just kind of very slowly get that first line drawn, the rest is pretty easy. Obviously, it's more manual, so not preferred in that way. Um, but it does give you a lot of control, like I said, once you get past that first that first cut and in cutting this stuff you're really going to want to focus on getting that finished edge as blemish free as possible you don't want to you know scratch the coating on this stuff it's pretty delicate so the hacksaw is a nice way to do that you can control that i think really well um, and then you can snip off the stuff that you don't really care about that that's not going to be visible that will be behind the actual tile piece um, by the way if you do cut into this stuff unless you're this is aluminum if you're dealing with stainless steel, you're fine. But if you're installing aluminum in a wet shower setting, you might want to think about coating it with some special fiberglass um, type or metal type coating. Um, I'll put a link in the description for this stuff that I have below. But it basically can go over and coat. It's basically clear coat for fiberglass and metal and lots of other things it has on the label. Um, and I've had a can of this around for a really long time and I, I use it and I just kind of dip it in there. Now, obviously you're going to want to test this first to make sure it doesn't stain or do anything crazy. Um, you know, dip, dip it in there, rub it on the outside, um, if you need to, and then, uh, let it sit for a week and see if it does anything. Now I do have a metal file right here and look how I'm kind of taking away those jagged edges because regardless of how you're going to cut this, you're going to have some little micro jagged edges that are from the cut that are going to be kind of poking out and just run your finger on there and you can feel it. So you want that to be nice and smooth. Um, I'm pushing it forward, not backward, right? You saw that kind of technique there. Could also use a little trim, you know, just kind of clean things up a little bit. 
Now, as far as vertical installation, we'll get back to cutting in a minute and I'll show you my preferred route or my preferred tool because I did find a better, more effective way than the hacksaw. Um, but as far as installing this vertically, um, I just accounted for the baseboard piece at the bottom and then kind of ran how far up I wanted to, to run it. Uh, and that took a little bit of measurement, right? Because you kind of have to guess how high will my tile go if you want it to be flush with the top of your of your tile. Now, if you're running all the way to the ceiling, great. Um, but so that takes a little bit of uh, measuring, you know, measure three times, cut, cut once. So once you have your cut marks, uh, this is my preferred way. I have a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel on the end of it. You can see there. Uh, don't skimp on the cutoff, you know, get a brand new cutoff tool. They're really affordable. You can get like a packet of 10 of them for or 20 of them for, I don't know, 10 bucks or something. Um, so they're really, really cheap. Uh, make sure you put a new one on there when you're cutting into the finished edge. It's going to give you the maximum the maximum cut. And so what I'm doing, obviously it's vibrating a little bit, but this is my preferred route over the hacksaw. I You have to have a steady hand, right? But you put it pretty much on max setting. Get your, eye, your goggles out so you can protect your eyes. Um, safety is obviously important. Don't take anything for granted that it may be spitting out, you know, little pieces of, of metal. I mean, that has to go somewhere, right? Why wouldn't it go up? So cover your eyes. Um, and just, you can see me here just kind of very carefully. I have, you know, some time and you have to have some patience. And I think I have patience. <laughs> um, I spent a long time trying to figure out how to how to cut this stuff in a reasonable, efficient, professional-looking way, right? Um, in terms of the end end result. Now, the pros would just put it under their fancy miter saw and their fancy blade and be done with it. Um, but this is a channel all about do-it-yourself. So I think the chances of somebody having a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel. I mean, I think I paid 15 bucks for this tool total, or 20 bucks or something years ago. Um, and it's a great little tool to have. If you don't have a Dremel tool, get yourself a Dremel tool. It's awesome. Um, and you can change out the drill, the, the bits on the end of it. And you know, they've got sanders and whatnot, but okay. So we finally cut through there. You can see it took a little bit of time, but look at that finish really nice, really controlled. You obviously want to practice cut a little bit before you go in and cut your $20 piece. He's, I think are about 20 bucks for eight feet more or less, maybe it's like 17 or 14. I can't remember exactly, but I'll try to put links down below for everything too. But I got this at, um, where did I get the Lowe's? I think, yeah, I got these at Lowe's, but, um, I'll try to find links if they're available online. I'll pop those down below. Now, as far as the kind of the mitered cut, Got to get that 45 degree perfect, like I said, or like you saw earlier, use that that uh, T-square to, to make sure your pencil line is perfectly at a 45 degree. And you can cut the back first. You don't have to cut through the thickest part of the metal on the back part because that's going to be hidden, right? So it's really not important what that looks like or where that cut is. Um, so a little tip there, you know, cut on the, the thinnest part of that metal. You can see those two holes there. Just find the thinnest part. I do like to cut at an angle. I don't know. You don't probably have to um, because that part doesn't, you don't need to miter that part. Uh, that's not going to be conflicting with the other part because that's going to be facing down, downward, if this is the bottom piece that we're looking at, um, if that makes sense. If it doesn't, you can check out my other video on how to install this trim specifically on a all around a shower niche. So, okay, just some more visuals here for you of the 45 degree cut and obviously don't forget to file it down. You don't wanna cut yourself um, if there are any jagged edges poking up and also that will affect how they kind of bump up against each other, the two, the two 45 degree cuts that you make for your corner. So, it's kind of what it, what it looks like. Pretty good, I would say. Professional, eh, 
close. I'm a do-it-yourself guy. I'm okay with things not looking, you know, 99%. But if I could get it to, you know, 85, 92, 95%, I'm generally pretty happy with that. And obviously, you want to clamp things down. Um, I've got a clamp in the front. If you just clamp the front part, it's going to still pivot on you as you cut. It'll kind of want to turn a little bit. And so make sure you clamp it in two locations. You can obviously hold it with your hand if you need to on the back location. Kind of like I'm doing, but I think I have it clamped on the back too. Uh, and check out this. It, you can see my Dremel tool kind of kicking a little bit. Uh, that's telling me that my blade is probably getting a little a little run down. And I went through two blades. Uh, or yeah, two or three blades, I'll say, for the whole shower trim piece so two eight foot vertical pieces or like seven foot vertical pieces and then my shower niche trim corners so you know it does grind those wheels down a little bit you could see there with the pliers you can bend that stuff off too you don't actually have to cut all that metal um, on the back uh, the finished part you do but once you've got the finished part cut through you can pry it off with a pliers or something. Now, as far as installation goes for the vertical pieces, once you have your, your, your trim piece measured and cut to length, um, what I'm using this trim piece for is the outer edge, right? Like you can see the, where it's going to go. And I want to tile basically the start with the bottom and make sure my trim piece is going to be vertically in place on the most, on the bottom part. That means in my case, I want to make sure that the bottom of the trim piece is going to kind of rest right on top of the, the top part of my baseboard, right? So I got to measure that and make sure those pencil marks are in. And you can see I have thin set applied to my bottom most tile that's going to kind of come up into contact with that trim piece. So I'll get that all prepped and ready to go. And we'll speed this up here for you a little bit. All right, so what I'm doing on my first trim piece, and I changed my method on my second trim piece because I didn't like this as much, but I started out thin setting where the vertical trim piece is going to go. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, just a thin layer. My idea was I was going to pin it down vertically all the way up from the get-go, right? So I was going to place it in there, make sure that it's got a thin layer, an undercoat to it, so it can can kind of stay there. And any thin set that pushes through, of course, I would be wiping that down. But the idea was to kind of get it situated early on, thinking that that's kind of what I had to do, um, and pinning it down with my base tile. So I'll show you kind of what I did in the second, for the second trim piece. This worked fine, but it's not, it would not be what I recommend. And that trim piece will stay in place if it's embedded all for its full length in a layer of thin set. Now, obviously if you move it or bump it, it's going to, it's going to move on you, but let's go ahead and get that base tile in. And we'll get that pressed firmly up against the waterproofed red guarded wall there. That's why it's red if you have never seen that before. It's a liquid waterproofing membrane that you put on over your cement backer board to fully waterproof your shower. Anyway, that's a whole another story. And I've got a few videos out there on that if you are curious. Feel free to check that out. All right, I'm just focusing on that tile to make sure that it is level, that the thin set is kind of cleaned out off the top, that my spacers are underneath. Okay, so obviously you want to make sure that vertical piece is indeed level. And it is. You want it, that bubble to be perfectly in the middle. You couldn't see it there, but it was extremely level. I was pretty happy about that. 
Now, why did I not prefer embedding it in thinset first? Because as you work your way north with tiling toward the ceiling, you might need to make some small adjustments, right? Especially for the do-it-yourself tiler, your measurements might be off just a hair, and you might have gaps in between your tile and that trim piece that you might not have accounted for. You could compensate and move everything down, but you might have gaps then on the inner corner of your wall there. Um, and so I ended up having to adjust the trim piece a little bit as the thin set was setting. Um, so it disrupted the thin set. Uh, it was fine. I put down some new thin set. You can rub off the old stuff, um, but I wasn't super happy with it. So, but that's what it was. So hopefully you can learn from that. Uh, not mistake, but... Uh, you also saw, saw some shims up there or some braces um, pushing that. You might have to get a little creative. You could also take some shims here and cut them down to size if you're up against a door jam or something. Or a door trim piece. It's not a jam. Just to kind of, until that thin set dries, pushing it in there so it doesn't back out on you. Okay, that's just a little tour of what we're doing there. So I've, I've got that second trim piece installed. You didn't see that. This is my trim piece around the shower niche and it's gonna go in kind of like that. So I wanna make sure my cuts are all um, mitered. And of course I skipped over the installation process. Again, that's in another video. I do that step by step, give you some tips, ideas, and lessons learned, right? So this is kind of the finished Product and obviously we're gonna grout that up. Yes, you can grout around this stuff. You don't want the grout to stay on there very long. So um, I'm using um, Mapai Mapai Ultra Color. Uh, you wanna get that fast setting grout off there as fast as you can. You don't wanna damage the finish on that. And then of course, uh, you might have a small gap in between your drywall and your finish. You can put some paintable caulking on that and then run your finger along that so it's nice and finished and paint over it and you should be good to go. So that is how you do it. Hopefully this video has helped you out. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you uh, would like more videos like this. I try to put out videos regularly. So thanks so much.